everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to create additional facial tweak controls and symmetrize all of our modules. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to follow along, I left a link below to the full workshop library for this series. Our rig is almost complete. The only thing missing before we're ready to symmetrize is some tweakers around the face. Usually we need additional tweakers to allow animators to fine-tune their facial expressions. What exactly do I mean when I say tweakers? It's a generic name for localized mesh riveted controls, like we usually create around the eye socket and the cheeks. These are very relevant to facial rigging, but very often used within the body rig as well. So before we create those, I want to show you an example scene with three different types of tweakers that Block contains. First of all, the tweaker feature is located within the free control module. The first example we're going to look at is this shoulder strap control. Let's open its module settings and the mesh tweaker layer drop down. Here you see all of the tweaker related settings. These might look confusing, but I'll try to explain them the best I can. First, to activate the layer, the as mesh tweaker attribute is checked and the rivet to mesh attribute is the mesh we want to rivet the control to. The attributes below will tell Block what kind of setup to create. This setup is for riveting to a mesh that is not affected by the riveted control. So here I want to rivet the control to the shirt mesh, but the related joint will not be a part of the shirt skin cluster, as I only want to deform the strap with it. Take note that the meshes are separated to separate the skin cluster nodes. The second example is this color control. Here we see the same input mesh, but the same mesh effector is turned on. So what does this attribute do? This tells Block that I want to rivet this control to the input mesh, and I also want to deform it using its related joint. Now you must say, well this will create a cycle, wouldn't it? As the control follows the mesh, but also deforms it. The same mesh effector checkbox is telling Block to create a setup that will get around the cycle. So when the module's related joint affects the riveted mesh in any way, remember to turn this attribute on. The last example is this second color control. Here we see the same thing again, except is local attribute is turned on as well. So what is the difference here? This setup is assuming that the deformation related to this module is local, meaning it affects a different mesh that will remain at origin and tunneled into the deformation stack using a blend shape node. This will prevent us from stealing skin weights from the main skin cluster. This setup is also known as the Dorito effect, and those of you who are familiar with it must know they are a huge pain to create. Luckily in Block, you create these in a few clicks. So why do we use this type of setup instead of directly adding the joint into the main skin cluster? It is a way for us to effectively create multiple skin clusters on the same mesh. Let's construct and I'll explain all of this further. First, the strap control. It is riveted to the shirt mesh and following it, but isn't affecting the shirt. It is only affecting the strap mesh. This setup is very useful for clothing attachments. Straps, buttons, necklaces, bow ties, basically any mesh attachment that we want to rivet to a deforming mesh beneath. The second control is riveted as well, but is also a part of the shirt skin cluster, and without any cycles. I'll run the cycle check on command to show you that I'm not cheating by simply turning the warning off. Although the result is slightly problematic, since the weights of the tweaker is stealing influence from the main skin cluster. This is where the local setup comes in. I'll move the global control so the setup will be clearer to understand. What I have here is a local mesh that is kin to a static joint at origin and our tweaker joint. The deformation of this local setup is tunneled into the deformation as a front of chain blend shape. Remember that this module's same mesh effector attribute is turned on. It isn't a part of the main skin cluster, but it still affects the riveted mesh indirectly. Moving the neck control again, we see the difference between the setups very clearly. The local setup is essentially additional deformation, and the main skin weights remain undamaged. This is the setup we're going to use for our facial tweakers as it fits best. All of this will get even clearer once we create it. Let's deconstruct and create our first tweaker. I'll create a free control under the head, mark it as facial, 
set the control shape to a diamond, and open the Mesh Tweaker layer dropdown. I'll activate the layer, input my face mesh into the Rivet to Mesh attribute, mark it as same mesh effector as well as is local. I'll then place my guide at the inner part of the eye socket. Now I'll create the local mesh by duplicating my face mesh and renaming it. Then I'll create a local static joints for the base weights. I'll bind my mesh to the static joint and the new tweaker joint and paint some influence to it. Now I'll add this local mesh into the existing front of chain blend shape node we already created for the cheek shapes and turn it on. Now I'll construct the rig to see the result. And just like that, my tweaker setup is done. The control follows the mesh's main deformation as well as deforms it using an indirect local setup. I'll create all of the tweakers around the face off screen by simply repeating this process and adding more joints into the local skin cluster. Let's see how that looks like. These are my local skin mesh weights and all of my tweakers work well without damaging my main skin cluster weights. I think the rig is ready to be symmetrized, let's deconstruct. There are a few things you need to know before we symmetrize. All modules contain a symmetry type attribute that will dictate the type of symmetry created on module construction. Since animators sometimes have different preferences for control symmetry, it is up to you to choose the symmetry type. On construction, the right side controls will be reoriented based on the selected type. Also, there isn't an absolute or consistent symmetry type that will create the same result on any module, since the symmetry is dependent both on the orientation of your guides and the parent guide orientation, so there is simply no way to correctly guess the mirror orientation. So it is a trial and error process until you find the symmetry you are after, but I can say that if you deal mainly with blocks default guide orientations, the most common symmetry types are none, mirror X and mirror Z. With some experience using block, that will become more natural. Also remember that you can always start with a guide template you or anyone else created, where the symmetry types are already set correctly. So before this video, I did a symmetry type pass to all modules to make sure they're set correctly to my needs. Let's start our symmetry with the eye branch. I'll select the branch top and click Symmetrize. What you'll notice is that Block will attempt to find mirror components for every attribute that is mesh dependent. So when symmetrizing, Block will detect that the eyelids module contain two mesh dependent attributes, the upper and lower vertex lists. Then it will attempt to find corresponding right side vertices and rebuild the joint structure, basically doing all of the messy work for us. So you won't need to reselect your edge vertices when mirroring modules, so I recommend checking that your meshes are symmetrized cleanly and correctly before you start any rig. I'll go through all of the left side modules and symmetrize. Block will also attempt to symmetrize our extra channels attribute, as we created for the cheek shapes. To use this correctly, use L and R prefix for your targets, so Block will be able to find them. Let's see how that works. My blend shape node contains the right side targets, and my targets are named with the L and R prefix correctly. So now when I symmetrize the cheek module, the extra channels attribute will be mirrored, changing my L prefix to R, which will connect to valid targets when I construct, without any actions on my part. I'll keep going and symmetrize all modules. I'll set the right side pupil shapes and set the new targets in the right IA module and update the relevant follow control on the eyelids.
I'll then add the right side cheek control into the cheek raise layer in our lips module. Now let's construct again. I'll then symmetrize my shapes and extract them. I'll reposition the eyelid's remote style controls and save defaults for it. Lastly, I'll add all of the new joints into my skin clusters and symmetrize my skin weights. Everything looks good, except I see one last problem. My eyelid tweaker Z axis appears to be flipped. This is a known problem with a dedicated attribute to resolve it. I'll quickly deconstruct this module, load the module settings, and set the flip right Z attribute under the tweak controls dropdown to true and reconstruct. I also want to add another collider into our existing sphere vector push node by connecting the world matrix of the right eyelid root joint into the next slot in the array and connect all relevant attributes to it. I also mirrored the deformer weight map to match the deformation for the right side eyelid. Great, looks like we're just about done. Let's conclude this video here and move on to the next one to finalize our rig. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.